Hello friends, this video on diversity in living organisms part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now bring back our focus to our objective here that how are we going to study about the so many different life forms that exist on the earth because there are too many so how do we actually study them is it possible to study about each of them in detail one by one that's not possible right because i mentioned in the previous slide i mean the first slide itself that that is something which is not at all possible so what technique do we follow here we will actually follow the technique of classification so what are we going to do in classification? So as the name suggests, classific classification means to classify objects into different groups or to put objects in different classes. Now, I think I'll take one scenario as an example to make you understand the concept of classification better. That why are we actually classifying living organisms? So classifying living organisms into groups based on certain set of characteristics okay right? so what are we going to do instead of studying each and every organism in detail which is actually not possible what are we going to do we will put them into different groups and then we will study about that group right for example when i talk about classes you you can take this uh, visualization that let us suppose in your school you would have seen students of class 5 they sit in the same classroom students of class 6 they sit in the same classroom which is different from class 5 again students of class 7 they sit together in a same classroom so when you divide the students into different different classes then what do you do now when you you do the teacher doesn't need to go to each student and teach them the student will, the teacher will go to a particular class and will teach the same thing to all the students belonging to that particular class. Correct? So, for example, the science teacher. Now, if you imagine a school where you have not divided the school into different classrooms. So, you have 100 students in the school and all of them are sitting in just one big hall. Now, the science teacher comes and the teacher had to teach them. Now, the teacher will not know what to teach them because there are students who, who belong to class 1. There are students who belong to class 10. So the teacher doesn't know what to teach there, whether she's supposed to teach something that, that is of class 1 standard or that is she has to teach something which is of class 10 syllabus. So that is why what the school does, they divide the students into different classrooms. Now the teacher goes and she doesn't need to teach each and every student. There are maybe some 40 students in one class. So she'll deliver her lecture and all the 40 students will be able to understand because they all belong to the same so they are all at the same level right so classification means you will actually we will actually put the organisms some organisms in one class some other organisms in a separate class and then we will study about the characteristics of each of those classes right so now here these characteristics play a very important role that how are we going to understand that how do we classify the organisms into different groups right so for that we need to understand the meaning of the word characteristic. What do I mean when I say characteristic? It is a feature or quality belonging to a particular organism. So when I say characteristic, it is something which is, which is completely present in a particular organism. So let us take some examples. For example, when we think of birds, can you... Uh, think of a characteristic or can you think of a quality of a bird which is very closely related to the bird? Flying, right? So birds can fly. So this is a characteristic of the bird. Fishes can swim. So swimming is a characteristic of the fishes. Now humans have one nose, two eyes, five fingers. So these are characteristics of human beings. Right? Because these are some of the features or these are some of the qualities which are associated with each and every human being. Similarly, trees are immobile. Trees do not move from one place to another. So that is a characteristic of the trees. So these are some of the examples <clears throat> which actually define the characteristic of a particular organism. Whether it is flying for a bird or swimming for a fish or... <clears throat> 
or uh, having five fingers for a human being or being immobile for a plant right so now you understand what is a characteristic okay so now based on certain characteristics we are going to classify these wide variety of living organisms into separate classes now again that, that is also again going to be a not very simple job so we need to understand how was it actually classified so first of all we need to understand why do we need to classify what is the need now the what first need is very clear because it is not possible to study about each of them in detail because they are too many they are too many and all of them look so different from the other one for example if you if you think of a human being if you think of a butterfly and if you think of a fish do you think that there is any similarity between the three there is nothing at all that that is what it looks like so we feel that how can we i mean how if we want to study about something we need to study about each of them now again when you compare a butterfly with a mosquito again do they look exactly similar they don't again they have many dissimilarities so if i start learning about each and every living organism i don't know how many years is that going to take and even after that i will not be sure whether i have covered all of them or not right so that is one very obvious reason why we need to classify now are there any other reasons as well for which we actually classify so let us take an ex a, a scenario as an example which will make us understand the need to classify things let us assume that you have shifted to a new house so when you shift to a new house what happens you take all the stuffs that you had in your old house you pack them and you take them to the new house right so now in the new house you have different rooms you have something like a kitchen you have a bathroom you have a study room you have bedroom you have living room you have dining room so we have separate rooms right and we have plenty of things with us so here i have just shown very few things but when we actually shift to a new house we have a hell lot of things right so now why do we arrange things have you ever thought of it why is it that you have all things related to kitchen in in a separate room why do we why do we at all have different rooms why is it not that we have a big hall as a house and whatever things we have we just keep them in that hall that's fair enough right so why do we actually need to have different rooms why do we need to have a separate kitchen a separate bedroom a separate study room why do we need to have it that's because let us suppose you are living in a house where you don't have these separate room concept you just have one big hall and that is very big where you have all your stuffs now suppose somebody comes and asks you that hey uh, can you get me your physics book please so your friend came in and asked you to bring your physics book and can you imagine how many things you have in that hall we have so many things you have vegetables you have fruits you have knife you have toothpaste toothbrush you have your dresses you have the electrical appliances like the mixer grinder or the microwave so you have a lot of stuffs so out of those stuffs how difficult is it going to be for you to find out a physics book because they are not arranged in a proper way it is like everything is messed up you just know that it has to be there because i have i possess a physics book and this is the hall where i have kept all my things so it has to be there so you will at least have to spend almost uh, some half an hour to one hour to find that physics book out right because things are not arranged so it is very difficult to find out things but on the other hand if we separate things if we keep things separate for example how do we classify things now how do we actually arrange things we broadly arrange them by keeping them in separate rooms for example in this picture we can see so many things right we can see a mixer grinder here we can see a carrot here we see a pen some books some notebooks microwave soap and so many other stuffs right so how do we actually arrange what do we do we have a separate kitchen 
we have a separate bathroom we have a separate study room so now what we will do is we will put the rooms which are related to each of these places in that particular room for example what are the things that should be placed in a kitchen something which is used for cooking purpose or something which is for our eating right so we can keep this mixy or the carrot so these things will go to the kitchen the microwave but when you look at this pen this pen is not going to be of any use in the kitchen so it should go to the study room so we keep the pen in the study room again the books should be going to the study room the notebooks again in the study room the soap this is generally used in the bathroom again the eraser will go to the study room the shaving kit should definitely go to the bathroom but this frying pan should go to the kitchen again the tissue paper should go to the bathroom the toothpaste and the toothbrush bathroom of course the study lamp should go to the study room of course and the knife to the kitchen so now what i did we classify the things depending upon their characteristic so what was the characteristic which was used to classify things the very basic characteristic that is whether it is used for studying or it is used for cooking purpose or it is used for toiletry purpose so depending on that we segregated these objects in three different rooms so now if your friend comes and asks you for a physics book what will you do you will not search in the entire house you will straight away go to your study room and you will search for your physics book in the study room so now if you would have taken one hour of time that time in searching now you will take a lesser time because now you have to search amongst the things which are there only in the study room so you got rid of a lot many other things so now you have to search only amongst these things to search for your physics book so you understood why we classified because on classifying the objects or on separating these objects it become it became little easier to know where an object can be so understanding things will become quite simpler so similar is the case with these many living organisms existing on earth there are so many of them that if we want to study about each of them we will reach nowhere because there are too many of them so what we will do we will classify them into different groups depending upon some characteristics now what are those characteristics depending upon which we will classify them we will see that so what did we study here the need for classification so why do we need to classify first it is not possible to study about each existing living organism in detail quite obvious right classifying organisms into groups make it easier to know about different life forms as i mentioned that now if you want to search for your physics room physics book you don't need to haunt the entire house you just need to search for it in your study room so you got some idea that where an object should be so similarly when we divide the living organisms into different groups and if then i ask you do you know about how much do you know about uh, the living organism called uh, bacteria so then you will know that okay bacteria this particular bacteria falls in this class and these class organisms have these properties so you will know at least some properties of that particular living organism right classification helps us to understand the evolution of all life forms to a large extent so this also you will see as we go ahead that with the help of classification we also get to know that how this life form came into existence do you think that when i mean the, the life forms have been existing on this earth from the very beginning initially there was nothing on earth as well so everything started from somewhere so some life forms came and from that many different life forms start coming up so with the help of classification we also get an idea that how this particular life from form originated so every life form has originated from some other life form so we get an idea about that with the help of classification scientific naming of organisms is also based on classification so what is the scientific naming like every organism which we see whether it is 
human beings or it is um, a particular plant or it is a fruit or whatever we see for everything we have a specific scientific name what is the scientific name now now for example if i talk about mango so we call it mango right but in different languages people will call mango with some other name so now in order to universalize things so that everybody calls mango with a same name if i say mango maybe somebody who doesn't understand english will not understand what i'm talking about or which object i'm talking about so in order to get rid of those different names for different organisms so there was a system of naming every living organism scientifically so we have a scientific name for every living organism and that is universal so everywhere whether you go to a country where people speak english or you go to a country where speak, people speak spanish or french or whatever they will understand that scientific names right so this the the way and how do we give scientific names to living organisms that is also based on classification so this part you will not understand very clearly right now because it will take some time once we are through with this lesson then i will at the towards the end of the lesson i'll tell you what exactly is scientific what exactly are the scientific names and how do we give scientific names to each living organism so for now you can just understand that in order to universalize the name of each living organism we give them a scientific name now how do we give that scientific name giving that scientific name is based on the classification of that organism we should know that this organism falls under which group so based on that we give a scientific name to that organism so these are some of the advantages of classifying organisms into different groups right okay thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again